Alright, today on Everyday HDR, I'm going to show you how to process your images in Photomatix Pro 4.0. I know for a lot of people that have been coming to H Everyday HDR for a while, this is probably not going to be very new to you, but there's some beginners that would like this as a video tutorial. So, I'm just going to go right into it. You can load your bracketed images by pressing load bracketed images right here, and you can browse for them. But to me, that takes quite a while to go through all those and find my set of five exposures that works. So what I typically do is I have my other screen open and I just drag and drop those images right into Photoshop or Photomatix, excuse me, or I take drag and drop those right onto the Photomatix icon before I even open up the program. First thing it prompts you is do you want to merge for HDR processing or open the files? Well I want to merge for HDR processing. That's why I purchased a HDR program. Press OK. So here are the images that I just dragged in. You can have it show the intermediary 32-bit HDR image, but I'm going to tell you it doesn't really help you much because your screen can't process an HDR image. It has to turn it into a 16-bit in order for it to work, so don't, I, would, I would uncheck that and not even worry about it. Now you want to align your source images and you want to have them cropped, otherwise they'll be banding on the top, hand, top and left and right hand side of your image. By correcting horizontal and vertical shifts, I would select that if you used a tripod or by matching features, which is what I typically do because I do a lot of my shooting by hand. Reduce ghosting artifacts. Always select semi-manual for this. I'll tell you why in a little bit. Reduce noise. No, I do that in Photoshop. And reduce chromatic aberrations. Yes, because I don't want those magenta and cyan little lines to be anywhere on my image. I can't stand those things. And now we wait. Photomatix aligns our images for us. This is the absolute coolest thing about Photomatix Pro, <coughs> is that when you align your images and you select uh, semi-manual deghosting, you get the opportunity to select areas on your image that would be ghosts because of movement. And right now I'm seeing that this is going to be a ghosted area because this is the waves moving in. I can select it by clicking on my left mouse button and dragging it around the image. I right click it to say this is a ghosted area. Now when I preview this, check out what happens. That grayish area that, that looks like noise right now is going to turn into waves coming in. So I'm going to do that for everything that where there would be movement in the water. And there's no method to my madness. I'm just kind of selecting and going around. It doesn't have to be perfect. Basically, what Photomatix is doing is it's selecting uh, one of your one of your exposures and using one of your exposures as its base point, and not all five aligned exposures. Check this out. Perfect. Looks good to me. So I'm going to go. Now we're going to go ahead and wait for it to generate our HDR image. This is the best time to drink your water or your beer if you're one of those that imbibes like myself. Within reason, of course. I don't let my Irish roots get to me too much. And we wait. Oh, we a little bit longer. And here we are. Now I have about 77 presets loaded in my Photomatix. And every time I pull an image, and I usually use those as a baseline and go through a, a selection of them to see if, how my image is going to look with my, let's say, beach setting. And it looks a little dark. But for this sake, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the default settings and show you how all these slider bars work because they are pretty intimidating as a beginner when you look at them. First things first, up here, you can change the ratio of the image. And what that does is it moves a little faster as you go through your slider bars. But it doesn't give you a very accurate depiction of what your HDR image is going to look like. So I usually go about a quarter. Half takes a little bit too long for all my stuff to go in, so I'll just leave it at that. Right here what you have is the histogram. So everything that you're doing affects this histogram while you're processing your HDR image. One thing to keep in mind is that you want to have a nice little bell curve here. Um, in your histogram. 
So everything on the right hand, uh, left hand side, that's all your dark, your darkest darks. So there's not a lot of dark going on in this image right now. So you don't see much in the black area. This is all your middle gray. So our image is predominantly a middle gray. If we were to turn it to black and white right now, it'd be a middle gray. And then here is all your highlights, your whites. So over here, I always go to tone mapping, and the method is always going to be detail enhancer. I'm not a big fan of the tone compressor. I've only used it maybe twice, to be honest with you. Strength, I always jack up to 100%. Color saturation, I'm not big on, on saturation in HDR images. I say that this is absolutely disgusting, and if you have your HDR images like this, I feel sorry for you. So I usually take mine down to about, it depends. This image, it looks pretty good at about 49%. Luminosity affects the area around each ind individual pixel. pixel. So I'll, I'll go with 10.0 on luminosity. Micro contrast, I usually jack that up to the top also. And see how it affects the image. Uh, that right there is about good. Smoothing. If you go to the far right, there's not a lot of smoothing going on between your pixels here. And if you go to the far left, you get that really grungy HDR look. So here's the more natural look. And here's the more grungy look. I prefer something right in the middle, so I'm going to go right about there. A mm, little bit more. A little bit more on the grungy side. Okay. So your tone settings, your white point is going to affect all the white area, your white pixel areas. So if you notice that your image is getting really dark as you're going through your processing, you can go ahead and play with the white point, and you'll see that the areas that are white start to become more white, and the areas that are black start to become more black. I usually keep these kind of low in the very beginning and then work with it as I go along. Your gamma is going to affect the amount of uh, brightness in your image. That's that's not good. I'm going to go down here. That, that works for me. I might, and at this point, I might jack up my white point a little bit. There we go. Temperature. To the far right, you're going to get into your yellows to the far left you're going to get into your more blues. I'm going to go with something a little bit in the middle of the blue and the medium. So like I took this picture at sunset and I like kind of like that blue, not the yellow. Saturation in the highlights. If you put this all the way to the left, it takes all the saturation out of the highlights and makes them black and white. And if you put it to the far right, it highly increases the saturation in your highlights. Like I said before, I'm not a big fan of saturation in my images. I didn't see it that way, so I don't want it to look that way. I want it to be more natural looking. Saturation shadows, jack it up, and you've got your saturation in the shadows. Bring it all the way down, and you've got no saturation in your shadows. Keep that about the same as the saturation in the highlights. Now your micro smoothing. This is going to get into the areas. The high, the farther to the left this is, the more you the more noise you're gonna get, but the more grungy look you're gonna get in your HDR images. If you put the micro smoothing all the way up, it's not doing much to your image. Let's look at the preview. I do that a lot. I go to this preview button and see what the HDR process is doing. No HDR, HDR, no HDR, HDR. So I usually keep my micro smoothing down. Highlight smoothness. This is good for cloud areas. Your cloud areas are going to start getting a lot smoother when you bring your highlight smoothness up. See how it starts to clean up those sky areas that are looking really dark and dingy? It's also my experience here that in this loop that, that Photomatic shows you as you click on an area of an image, that loop always looks worse than than you would think. So when you actually process this, it doesn't really look that bad. But it gives you an idea of what, where the noise exists in your image. And shadow smoothness. Smooths out your shadows. A lot of these are self-explanatory. It looks intimidating because there's a lot of slider bars here. Shadows clipping. Look at the histogram as I do the shadows clipping. As I move the shadows clipping to the right, it starts to pull the histogram to the left. Well, it normally does. 
what's going on here? It's proving me wrong. There we go. And you see what it's doing to the image as it's, it's, it's taking your shadows and it's clipping them and pulling the histogram to the left to increase the shadow areas. I don't really suggest doing any shadows clipping. And the 360 image, I'm not sure what that's all about. But I'm kind of liking the, what I've got going on here with my Photomedix image. And the rest I can fix in Photoshop that I don't like. That'll be next week's tutorial. So now I'm going to go ahead and process. There's your image. It's looking kind of kind of gross up here in the uh, cloud areas, and that happens with the HDR process. But I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then next week I'll go ahead and show you how I'm going to fix this image in fo in Photoshop after the Photomatix process has happened. One of the most important things you can do with your your HDR images is process the process post process them in fo in Photoshop or the GIMP or whatever post processing image software you have. I do not suggest you take an image straight out of Photomatix and put it on the internet or print it out because it's not complete. This is a negative. Uh, just as you would be in a dark room with a negative about to process your images on paper. It's the same thing if you go back to that day. I haven't done that stuff since I was in high school though. So that's it. That's Photomatix.